Tracer. See you, Lynn. <laughs> she exaggerates just a tad, as you will probably find out. However, last year when I said to everybody, there should convert one person. Make one friend for independence and we'll be there. Some of you have been gay promiscuous, I think. <laughs> but I'm pleased with that. It's absolutely fantastic that there should be a turnout like this because the polls say you're dead. And Ian Davidson, much more importantly. You know Ian Davidson? <laughs> Such a nice fella too. He says you're dead in the water as well. I think the turnout today belies the polls. I've got this theory about spots now when they are polled, they're just polite to whoever asked them. <laughs> However, this is absolutely fantastic. And you know something? I think it probably shows that people can be influenced to change if you put the right arguments, if you don't dwell in the past, if you look forward and so on. And I had a good example of that this week. I had written and I, have, I was speaking about risk taking. Ooh, risk taking. Well, we're supposed to do that when you've got the confidence that should come from independence because we'd be a crowd of dummies if we weren't much more confident and sure of ourselves and measuring ourselves taller in the world if we gain our independence. So confidence comes. You take a bit more of a risk entrepreneurialism should flourish and I was speaking and, and talking about this and you know I didn't think it was going to have as quick an effect and I didn't think it would be the sort of person that responded to it guess who said what he said guess who said that we should think about nationalizing back the postal services Alex Salmond yeah. now, Alex Salmond is on a winner I hope he looks at the railways next. I know it gave John Swinney a bit of a black hole or something to fill, but oh, he'll get over it. And I suppose when he mentions the railways, smelling salts for John Swinney. But that's the sort of that's the sort of vision that we should be holding out in front of the Scots. If we think that's the right thing to do, if it's right to keep water in public ownership, if it's right to have postal services in public ownership, if it's right to have the railway in, po in public ownership, then we say it. We don't do it in a week, we don't do it perhaps in a year, but that's what it is we're aiming for, which is a bit better than what we've got just now, which is terribly safe stuff from the Labour Party. The Labour Party was the, supposed to be the party of the people that held out the vision. And maybe it did once upon a time. And even though I'm older than Elaine C. Smith, I can't actually remember when the Labour Party did that. I remember when Jimmy Reid held out a vision and people followed him. But I don't want to do down the parties too much. I'm just saying to the Labour Party, you're as varied as the SNP is in its membership. There are as many opinions in Labour as there is in the SNP. There's even folk that don't agree with the Labour Party leadership. Mind you, they're no good at saying it. And those of us who said it in the SNP sometimes regretted it. Anyway, I think that the one other thing that I said last year that I'd want to repeat again, because there's, there's a bitterness creeping into things. Just remember that we're all Scots. We have to work together no matter the way it turns out. And if it's 50% plus one, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Labour have, we're told, labelled their project and their campaign the fear project. Now, I think that in itself is, is really horrible for the people who thought like that. But on the other hand, it puts the life of, fear of life at death in me when I think that they might win. That means that it's okay to have a 220,000 children in Scotland living in poverty. That means that it's okay to think about handing on a debt to our children and grandchildren of more than a trillion pounds. And we hear, when we hear all this baloney 
that there's a wee bit of improvement in the economy. Don't forget they've borrowed to get that improvement. That's got to be paid for, that's more of debt. And it's, the British currency has lost its AAA rating. We're fooling ourselves if we think we can afford to wait. We're going to do nobody any harm by becoming independent. And we can do all the folk in Scotland who have been done out of a good life. We can do them the world a good by becoming independent. It's obvious from the turnout, it's obvious from what I say here today, that I believe that yes is, is possible. I just think the folk who are writing off yes because of what opinion polls say are just wrong. Yeah. Now why, why do I think they're wrong? <laughs> just imagine what you'll be like in the day afterwards if you say no. Just imagine the way the Scots would feel. And just imagine what other folk would feel about the Scots. That we were all, all mouth and no kilts. We would not carry respect. We would not respect ourselves. And that would be reflected in the activity in the country. So therefore, it's unthinkable that it should be no. And just imagine them trying to have a party the day after. <laughs> a no party. Who would come? The plan is that we come here the day after to celebrate and bring a friend. I'm going to see him win another glorious triumph. Yeah.